How's well, it going? Oh, what's up, guys? Hype Nation News coming in. We just finished up a podcast with at Outlet Hunters on Instagram. Went into in-depth resale predictions on how to kind of work the retailer outlet um, to your advantage. Learning that market. Yeah, learning that market. So get ready, stay tuned, and enjoy. That's all right. Hey, it's a pleasure to meet you, man. We appreciate you coming on the podcast. Um, as you know, we just talk. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, man. So, as you know, what we do is we just bring influencers on and we basically talk streetwear topics. Um, so, we were wondering if we could just like pick your brain and just go about it. Yeah, man. I'm all for it. Let me go ahead and uh, pull something up real quick. Yeah, absolutely. Take your time, man. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm cool. Let's let's do it. Perfect. So awesome. let's go. For people that don't know who you are and don't know what it is you do on Instagram, obviously, like if they stumble across your page, they know you're a basically a master of steals. Um, just go ahead and give a brief overview of like how you came into the sneaker culture, what you provide to the culture, and uh, kind of just your overall sense. Yeah, for sure. So basically, I started getting into. Or before I start, can you hear me? Okay, I don't. Yeah, I don't make sure. absolutely. Okay, cool. Basically. I got into sneakers, I want to say, like 2013, 2012 back then. And I was just going to sneaker con back when it was like super small, nothing big, nothing like that. Um, But actually, to be honest with you, it started with um, the Jordan 5 Independence Day. That was my the very first shoe that I had. so yeah, that's where that started, and then I started collecting shoes on and off, and then all, all of a sudden, I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to create an, an Instagram page just to, you know, kind of post some of my stuff. Um, I sold some stuff here and there, and then I just started posting some outlet finds, and I don't know, man, it just blew, it just blew up. I guess that's what people like to see, so yeah, the main thing that I do is just try to provide the craziest finds that people uh that i find or people send in like ross and nike outlet and stuff like that okay yeah so you're just a master of retail hustle basically yeah pretty much That's because awesome. i mean there's there's other pages out there that post like literally everything um that they find and it's like that's cool but we're looking for the steals where there's a nice profit margin on it yeah super good profit margins and it's like stuff like the stuff that I like to post is the stuff that people are going to be like, yo, this is this is fake. There's no way this is real. Because I want people to realize that if you would just get out there and look, you, you could, could find something. Are, sooner or later, you'll find something. That yeah, when did you it. first start hustling around and finding all these, like, good steals? Like, do you li- where, like, where's, you obviously live in Atlanta, right? So were you just hunting around your local marshals trying to find normal clothes and you just stumbled across this and you're like, oh, shit. So how I got started with the steals and stuff, I never really found it. Like, there, it wasn't like one thing that I found that was like, yo, I got to start doing this. I was seeing stuff on the internet or on Instagram and stuff like that where people were finding stuff. And I was like, yo, there's there's no way that like people are finding stuff like this. It's just not possible. <laughs> right. Yeah, because you see some crazy stuff pop up. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's your, page, your page almost started out of hypocrisy. Well, you were like, there's no way this is true. And you, then it just turned out it was so true. Because you think someone takes their shoe off, puts it up, and then takes a picture. Is what, you know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So like that's how I really got there. I was like, yo, there's no way this is real. I got to get out here and look for myself. Right. So I, I started going to the Marshalls, the, uh, the Ross. Stuff like that. I, I found the, the thing, the very first find, I was like, yo, this is real. This is the real deal. I found a pair. It was it was kind of a, it was a while ago. Um, but it was a player edition pair of like Black History Month Hyper Dunk or Hyper Oh, Dude. wow. Okay. So I was like, yo, there's no, how does this even get here? Right? right. <laughs> That's what so random. Pass through? Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was just, it was just crazy to me. So I was like, yo, I'm just going to start documenting this stuff and I'm just going to open it up to everybody else to see what they find because chances are if I do that, then people are going to send me way better stuff than I find on a weekly True. basis. Yeah. Because there's only so much you can find. Yeah. 100%. It's, there's definitely like, that's part of like, 
I feel like there's a lot of difficulty with that retail hustles. Like there's a lot of footwork involved and the hustle doesn't come from, you know, oh, anyone can go to a Ross and look around, but you got to start going to like Rosses that are like 30 miles in a right. circle. Like right. you got to start yeah. like tracking to all of them. Yeah. It's yeah. those that actually turn a profit. It's, yeah, it's, it's really it's a science to it because if you're going to go out and source, if you can't just say, yo, I'm about to go to, um, I'm just going to go to Ross today and just hit the local Ross in your town. You got to do research and be like, okay, there's a Ross here, 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 and here. And also, there's also the Marshalls and there might be even a Nike outlet. So you, you're hitting like 12, 13 stores in a day at least. Dang. And you'll find something that's actually worth yeah, it. Yeah, that's like less than an hour a store. So you're, you're like running through going straight to the footwear section just and just running through. Just get and go. Yeah, so do you look up prices beforehand before you go hunting? No, it's 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 hard because you have to like physically source the sword, uh, bef like while you're in it because you got to type in. Sometimes, like after a while, you get to know like you'll see you know common items throughout you know different stores, and you'll be able to point out like yeah, this goes for this. This is a brick or um, right. make some money off of this. But other than that, <laughs> you just got to type in the, the the style code and the product code into all the different apps and stuff like that, and basically you'll find um some some decent cops if it's you know, able to be flipped. Okay. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically probably just hunting around on StockX. And what, so me, what me and Dave do sometimes when we go hunting around, uh, so we get a lot of rep off eBay. So what we do is we go into eBay and we look at the sold and completed items for a typical product. And that'll yeah. show you like what the last sale was. And it can show you like if there's any sales velocity behind it. Um, and that's always nice because you don't want to pick up a bunch of ultra boosts that are, you know, selling for $60, but the last one that sold went for 65 and it sold like three months ago. Right. Right, right. You want to get a different, you want to get a, a decent outlook of what it's actually selling like now and the actual price. Like you don't want to look up like an item on eBay and then see just regular stuff that's posted. You want to see actual proof that it's selling. Right. Yeah, so exactly. That's what, yeah, that's what I look for for sure. So typically after I see like you always have like pretty current shoes like the chlor the chlorophylls are on here. We have the sesames, concords I saw were on there as well. How long do you wait after a release to b before you go start checking stores for specifically that shoe? That's a good question because I used to wait um, about a week or so. Uh, I wouldn't go the, the day of the release. Mm -hmm. But the craziest thing, I went to my local outlet. It was uh, in Locust Grove, Georgia, and they actually had the Concords the Concord 11s on release day. Oh, and wow. For retail. So I was like, wow. Yeah. I think I did post that a while back. I don't know exactly the date, but yeah, I was super surprised to see that they had those there. Yeah, right. Like, the, that just, just shows you, like, stock numbers must have been so high. People were just right. leaking them out yeah. everywhere. They were just passed yeah. through every store. That's but crazy, they, though. The 11s, though, man, like, doesn't matter how many pairs, those, they're still going to sell out. Always. Always. Yeah. yeah. Every time they're, they're going to do restocked. nothing but gain in value. Exactly. They've yeah. been restocked after they've dropped multiple times, and every single time they've sold out. Everybody's still like, yeah, I need these 11s. Because right? the thing of 11s is people that aren't even into sneakers, um, especially in Atlanta, you know, they, they know what 11s are if they don't know about anything else. You know what I mean? They know 11s are you know they can flip them and make some money or just having 11s is, is a, a cool a cool shoe to have so. yeah it's right. iconic yeah yeah it's just because so. it's it's because it's so dense with history man like back to the original release of them yeah and that's why there's still so much hype behind it today um but specifically when you're going hunting around in these stores do you have a local team with you now that like you got two or three guys with you or do you may mostly just do the hunting yourself and then you just get submissions from other people that find good picks so I mostly go uh, mostly by myself, and if not, I have a couple of my buddies with me. But they're not really into it; they're just going just to go because I just, I guess, they just like to see what I do. I guess, but yeah, they help out here and there. But the majority of it is just me just going out and then people sending sending submissions in. Um, like I said, because I can't be everywhere at once. And yeah, start, your find is going to be better than my find during that day, just because of. Like the crazy stuff, you can't find it all in, in one area. You know? Exactly, and why why have only a set of eyes when you could have like you know a thousand a thousand set of eyes? Right, exactly. 
Dang, that's that's uh that's that's kind of nice though. You know, using the using the social network to just kind of throw all the steals out there to just show yeah. proof that that's because you've got li- people it's following you from everywhere also, so yeah. it's good for them to see. Yeah, it's it's crazy because like I I have this guy that followed me, or I'm sure a couple people from Egypt at least, but one of this one of the people that followed me from Egypt, he was telling me that they get a bunch of uh, releases like super super early there. Oh, okay. oh really? That's cr- yeah, because I posted a. Uh, Why is that? Is that because you think it's just closer to like Asia? Maybe the factories just send out uh, Paris uh, or leaked Paris? Maybe that just get through and they just end up there. I don't know to be honest, but they had like the hyperspaces. They were sitting at the Adidas store in Egypt, like the actual Adidas store. And oh. Those have released yet, have they? I don't think Not so. Not yet. Yeah. No, they, come no on, the hyperspace man. have. Yeah, the yeah. hyperspace has. At least it, it was yeah. on uh, the sixteenth. Oh, yeah, because okay, that was okay. that in the true okay. forms. And I thought the, it was next month. No, the or clays come out. The clays come out the thirtieth because okay, the U.S. was pushed is. back for uh, grade school and toddler sizes being produced, um, so it got pushed back to March thirtieth. But honestly, with all these productions of Yeezys, do you are you do you s- suspect or have you seen more Yeezys popping up in like retailers at all, or like in yeah. outlet stores? Sure. Not at outlets. I I've yet to see. Actually, that's a lie. I did see when the first the original Cream V twos came out. Yeah. I did see the the baby sizes were sitting like the super like toddler infant sizes. Okay. They were at, yeah. They were at the outlets, and it was only one pair though, and I assume it was a return. Right. But as far as um, like actual retailers like Foot Locker and Champs and stuff like that, you do see a fair amount just chilling at, at on the shelves there and they just have a decent size there. I think it all started around when um when the butters came out. That's when I really yeah, one hundred percent in it an influx of shoes just sitting on the shelves because yeah. I mean it's super unlike Yeezy right. to have his own shoe sit. So when I saw the butter sitting, I walked in there and I was gonna buy every single pair that was sitting and I was like, you know what, this is probably not a good idea because it obviously means something, exactly. right? All, if, a, if, exactly. a hype, if a hype brand shoe is just sitting there yeah, collecting exactly. dust, it's probably best to just leave it alone. Right. It's almost like it was too good to be true. Yep. But I, I did cop just one of the money sizes and I got a little bit of, of uh, a decent flip off of those. But I was no way going to just buy all of them. No. Yeah, yeah and get yeah. stuck with them. And then end up just making retail or under retail. Yeah, yeah then, probably under point, retail after fees. Yeah. Were you able to get a smaller size in them is why? Did I what? Were you able to get a smaller size? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I I don't remember what size I got, but it was a smaller size that I made a decent bid on. That's what's up. Yeah, and that's probably important. Like, when you're going through, like, I feel like it's really important to not only when you're looking for these steals, but you have to... You have to see that it's under market value, and then you have to remember that, like, all right, there's going to be fees incurred, shipping, like, the platform fees, like, and eBay, Grail, StockX fees. Too. Yeah, sizing. So, like, knowing all that information, I feel like, is really important. Have you just, like, accumulated that over time, would you say? Or do you just kind of, like, start noticing trends as you start doing this more? Honestly, yeah. It's, you really just have to learn as you go, um, because... Like you were saying, you do have to keep in mind all the different fees because um, there's, I don't know if, you, if y'all know about this, but there's like this thing that people have been doing recently, like it's called the StockX flip, where you can actually sell the item before you even buy it in, in like an Adidas outlet. Like I had, I purchased a couple of pair of Ultra Boost for like 39 bucks at the outlet, instantly flipped them on the StockX Um for like a uh, hundred and five dollars, so it was a decent bit of profit. But there were some sizes that, like, because the instant sell now or whatever, yeah, the profit margins weren't that high. So you do have to know, like, even though you are going to make ten dollars profit, is that ten dollars really ten dollars after right. the fees and all the traveling involved? Like, you have to make sure that the margins are going to be high enough to where it's, it's you're not breaking even, or you know, worse than that you know, working for like $7 an hour because you have to put all of your time into it like you're working a regular job. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you you got to start building up income from this. You know, there's no point in doing this if you're not making money. Exactly. So you have to make sure that you're fully optimizing all of your time. Right. And, you know, just making the most of all of it. So, yeah, it's a lot of of stuff involved. But like I said, 
over time, you'll get used to it and, you know, be able to move pretty e- efficiently. On a, on a good week, you know, where there's like steady inflow, like how many, sh- how many pairs of shoes do you think you pick up in a good week? <coughs> Honestly, I'm a full-time college student, so I, I'm not out there like every week doing it, but. But let's say it's summertime, you have nothing to do. You know, you're, you're hunting the stores. Oh, probably <laughs> like. Maybe 50 to 100, maybe. Yeah. Dang. Ass. That's a lot. So when you go and you find one pair of solid shoes, will you buy, like you said, when you saw those butters sitting and you wanted to buy out the stock, if you go into an outlet or something and you see a pair of shoes like that, will you buy out the stock, all sizes, or will you buy those, like, the top sizes that you know of, like you said, where you bought the smaller size, and then maybe, like, those 13 and a half to, like, 15 or something? Yeah, that's a good, that's a, that's a good question, actually, because... I've been thinking about that a lot recently because like I was going back, it all goes back to the time thing. You really just have to know how much time you have because, you know, if you don't have that much time, you're probably going to be better off going going with just the size that you know that you can sell or the ones that you can, you know, flip almost instantly on right. the stock profit. Or you can go ahead and buy the whole batch and sit on it for a little bit. But after a while, of course, it'll sell. It just depends on, you know, what I got going on to see if I can. Yeah, how long can you park a thousand dollars for? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it's one okay. of those things. I've done both of them before. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But you have to be able to max because the thing about it is you have to be able to maximize the different deals that they got going on. So right. When I yeah. do, when I do like a bulk buy like that, the last time I did it, it was super super. It was a super good deal. They had Ultra Boost for I think it was eighty dollars plus forty percent off. Oh. And then, so yeah, it was forty percent off on top of that, and then on top of that deal, they had a deal that it was fifty dollars off, one hundred and seventy-five dollars or more. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> Were you buying them in like bulks of like two hundred dollars? That way, you could get fifty dollars off on every time you bought it. Of course. That's, like, <laughs> yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's that's the hustler mind right there. You're like, well, actually, I'm just gonna buy these right now. Uh, I'm gonna go back for this set too. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's how it goes, and they had decent stock in there too. And they had some other, like, I don't know, man. That was probably the best lick I've, I've got in a while. That's now. that's a good, yeah. Dude, Ultra yeah. Boost are definitely one of those ones, too. It's just always going to sell. Yeah, everyone always wears them. They're, yeah. I mean, they're they're extremely comfortable, don't get me wrong. But they because, are, I feel like they are just overplayed, and that's why you were able to pick them up for almost, like, 30 bucks. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah. someone's going to buy them where you can't find them. Someone's going to buy them for 60 because yep. it's a $60 shoe, 100%. Yeah. For sure, man. That's yeah, crazy. It's, a lot of stuff to it and the reason why i love doing this is because like people can get caught up in in the hype and you know go for all the releases and get bots and stuff like that which don't get me wrong i love doing that too on the side yeah but like people are like way overlooking and way like, they're missing up the under the the like unturned stone you know right exactly like yeah you can make just as much if not more just going to regular stores that you walk by or drive by every single day it's literally money just sitting on the shelf. Like at least every single store you go to, there's at least one pair that you can buy and flip for at least twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah, and you know what's not as like it's not as devastating like when you walk through a Marshalls and there's nothing for you to buy. But it's like you know, like a lot of hypebeats are just like crushed when they don't cop that new pair of Jordans that drops like via draw, and they're right. like, "Son of a bitch!" Yeah, exactly. And and bro, everybody's been everybody knows that feeling too, and like. That's another reason why I started doing doing this back like back in the day, you know what I mean? Because I started off just buying buying shoes and stuff like that in 2012, like all the hype stuff. Yeah. And I was like, it's yeah, actually money and in, 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 you know the stuff that your grandma wears or your mom wears, you know what I mean? So yeah, they yeah. need clothes too, bro. Dude, yeah, you sell anything to anyone. Exactly. So- Back to what you were saying, though, how you do, like, the bot and stuff on the side. Do you uh, you buy any Supreme or any other streetwear and stuff? Like, or shoe-wise, anything like that? Um, yeah, so as, uh, let's start off with the shoes. So for shoes, I'll go for, I'll enter every raffle. And if I get lucky, I'll keep it. Okay. Or I'll, you know, if it's a, if I get a money size. Sometimes, I, I just, it's really just random, really, whatever I'm feeling. If I want to make if i want to flip i'll go for a size that i can flip or if i want it for personal i'll wear it for personal but yeah i don't really do too much of reselling any hype shoes um i do like supreme they stuff like that but that's just for personal i don't really 
I don't know, man. That's a whole different industry. No, completely agree. Yeah, it's, it's like a different side thing. Here, but it seems pretty dope, that's for sure. I respect the hustle. Yeah, that's yeah, I was going to say, yeah. the same hustle is there, and it's... At yeah. the same time, like you could do the same thing where you're doing with shoes with like low end supreme right. supreme items that are flipping yeah. for like dollars and stuff. Oh um, yeah, for sure. But so, I guess let's. Uh, what What are some of the I guess biggest flips you said was one of the ultra boosts? Do you have any other big flips that you've made in the past where you've bought like a significant like amount? The most memorable. Yeah, most memorable. Um. So like, are you asking like? Uh, the most like hype shoe or like the most money or uh you you could give us both honestly that'd be pretty interesting to hear all right we'll go for both so actually i found a pair or a bunch of pairs um i forget what was what it called the adidas um they look like the iniki runners i guess okay mm -hmm. yeah the, i or the 5923s or whatever i forget yep. But anyway, those were for eleven dollars, bro. <laughs> and I, I flipped each pair for eighty, so that was that was pretty fast. Ah, That's nice. Yeah. That was a bulk buy, though. That wasn't like just the most I made off of just one shoe. You know? Right. Yeah. Dang, that's nice though, man. That's it's always those bulk discounts that always just make it so worth it. So when yeah. you, when you walk in, are you always seeing at least one shoe with a low price like this or anything? Or is it just like that rarity that you walk in and you're like, yo, these boosts are at 11 bucks for a shoe. Like, I'm copping every single one. Um, honestly, there's gonna there's stores that I go to that I walk in. And as soon as I walk in, I'm like, damn, yeah, this place has deals. Yeah. Or there's a different store. The other way would, would, would be you walk in and it's like, yeah, this place is complete shit. Like, there's yeah. nothing here. It's okay. literally one way or the other. All right. Yeah, I can see that, though. It and makes sense. What what retailers would you say usually carry the most heat? Um, That's a hard, that's a tough question. I would definitely say... On average, I was like... Do you mostly get like a lot of things from Ross, Marshalls? I feel like the outlets, or the Nike like outlets, the would be kind of close. I feel like Adidas too. Yeah, the Adidas outlets. Yeah, get like NMDs. Adidas it's super cheap. One. Yeah, I, I just feel like what what whatever your definition of of heat is would definitely give you different answers. Because with that being said, is like how high can you go at an Adidas outlet? Right, you that the most hyped item you could possibly find would be what. Probably some boost. Yeah, if that boost or boost NMDs. Or, or like a Yeezy, right? Yeah, yeah, Yeezy. exactly. Any anything with that boost in there. Yeah. So, but the thing about the boost is though they put boost in a lot of different stuff. So. Oh, that's true. Um, that's true. Because it is in everything now. Boost. Yeah, you can find boost at any outlet you went to. Honestly. Yeah. So, if you want, if you're looking for that, then yeah, Adidas outlet is perfectly, you know, to it's a good idea. Nike outlet always. I, Nike Outlet is is always you know a good one to go to just because of if they if they don't have any kicks or any any heat as far as that goes they definitely got some apparel deals. Mm -hmm. or, That's true. Pick up some good Jumpman like twenty three shirts and stuff. Yes, but I would definitely say go to your outlets. Um, if you could, if you had to choose between the outlets and Ross and Marshall, I would definitely do the outlets just because it's a better to me. It's just a better experience. You know, you probably get a little bit more of a variety. Right, 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 yeah, but as far as, like, the Marshalls and Roscoe's, it's, like, it's either, you're either going to get super, super lucky, or it's going to be absolutely horrible, but the chances right. of it being horrible are way higher than there being something super crazy. Yeah. Just because yeah. of, it just depends on the location of the Ross, like, how often they get, you know, stuff. stuff yeah, well, <laughs> so do you know, do you know when, like, shipments come in at, like, Marshalls and, like, Ross at your local area, you, you know, like, every Tuesday, like, this is when this X shipment comes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another thing that you gotta know to be able to stay. How do, how do you learn that? You honestly, you. I, I just was like, hey, um, when do you guys usually get new shoes? And they, <laughs> they, they, they just tell me. Now, like, <laughs> That's, okay. Hey, Dang. Bert, aisle three, Bert. Yeah. <laughs> when do the new shoes come in? <laughs> oh, Tuesdays at eight. Yeah. Uh, I, Tuesdays at eight. Oh, okay. Damn, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> I feel yeah, because they. But honestly, do you think those? employees ever catch on like they're like yo this kid comes in every week and asks Maybe. me about these shoes like i've seen i've seen the videos um i 
I think they might, but I don't. I don't think they care just because. Yeah. They're making it's profit too. Man, if you should buddy up with one of them and get that employee discount. Maybe he'll, 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 he'll be, be he'll be sneaking it out the back door. Yeah. You won't even pay for half of them. He'll just put them in his trunk and be like lost and damaged. They're taken out of the truck. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. I did have a buddy that was he worked at the Nike store, so I, I would go. get hooked up with uh, that thirty uh, percent employee discount every yeah. once in a while. So that over. Yeah, do you do you, I was gonna say, do you try to build like a backdoor relationship with any of these uh local retailers? Yeah, you want to try to as much as you can, but you don't wanna be like that guy. Mm-hmm. Right. It's because the thing about the Nike store and you really have to be careful about this is most of those employees, probably ninety percent of them, um, know just as much about sneakers as you and, do, if not more. Uh, exactly. As you do if more. So if they get something crazy in the outlet it's going um, to them. Are, it, it's going to go to them. Yeah. If it's one pair and it will probably never ever see the shelf the floor. Yeah. Unless they get multiple pairs and they, it just really and depends each on each of the them get one. Floor. Yeah. Because Man. different managers are, are going to be different because, um, you know, one of them may be like the biggest hype beast and like, I don't care. You, you guys can take whatever you want. Or another one could be, you know, somebody that's super professional is like, no, you can only get this, blah, 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 you know, so it really, yeah. Is, but yeah, it, it, it's super clutch just to um, start building relationships with some of the employees because if they, even if they are going to backdoor, they, they'll they probably still let me know that they at least got Yeah, it. hit you up right. and be like, yo, I'll yeah. resell to you for a low price or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or, or even just send it to me so I can post it up on the page. Right. Or be like, yo, look, just I to got show one the proof. Pair left. You're the first person or the only person that I'm telling about this. Come get it. You right. Know, so. Oh, see, that's, yeah, that's cool. Have you ever been specifically turned away because from an outlet because they knew you were a reseller? Like maybe you were abusing a deal or something? No, not because of that. I try to be strategic when I'm bulk buying at a Nike store. I would, I'll take a couple people with me to where it doesn't look too, too crazy. Mm-hmm. But even at that, like they probably still know like why would I need this many shoes and all these different sizes. But the only really problem I ran into it is them telling me that I can't record in the store. <laughs> but that's about it. Oh, were you making a, a, a video or something? No, nah, my friend was really just, he was just messing around trying to act. He was like, yo, it's Albert Hunter's like trying to make a vlog. Uh. <laughs> they were like, they were like, yo, you can't record in here. Otherwise we're gonna have to let you go. He said, that's cool. He said, boy, put the phone down. I'm trying to make some money. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dang, yeah. that's nice, man. So you're basically, you're out here hustling. You're moving to retailers. You're, you're doing your grind. You're in college and everything. Um, so I don't really have any more questions for you unless Dave does. I don't, I don't think so. I mean, like, is this what you just want to keep continue doing though? Like just the outlet stuff or you, do you have anything coming up in the future at all? Yeah. What are your future plans for this page as it grows? Cause I mean, you're at a hundred K followers and that's just, yeah, it seems like you have a pretty like steady following of people who actually look at your content. Yeah. So that's definitely something that I want to, you know, make some progress on. I think as far as Instagram goes, uh, I'm I'm loving the way that things are going there. I think I just want to expand onto other platforms. Yeah, definitely thinking about getting onto YouTube. I did make one Instagram TV episode that did fairly decent. Okay. Um, so I'm kind of just gauging some of the feedback as far because I want to you know it's hard to start on Instagram and then try to get your people to go over and to start. another platform. Yeah, on, I was gonna on, say you li- honestly you literally just got to jump in and start doing it and just keep trying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Say, it's it's so literally that, just a matter of volume of content. You put enough content out there, eventually each one's going to touch a person it, differently yeah. and then they'll keep going on the track and watching all the other stuff. Right, yeah. So that's that's where I'm at now. I'm just trying to expand on the different platforms because, you know, I just try to, like, integrate myself more into it as well just so I can, you know, build that personal connection with the people that are actually watching. So it's right. not just outlet hunters you know they they actually see me doing the stuff yeah you know, so you know i mean it's just more of a personal connection i feel like that will be the next next step it keeps the community for, there yeah 100 percent. Right. yeah yeah engaged and interactive and stuff like that so but yeah man that's 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 what i got going on for the you know the future that's what's up man that's good yeah i like that 
Um, we're ready to wrap it up. If you want to go ahead and give a shout out to the audience of anything, maybe say follow your Instagram and whatnot. We'll go ahead and patch that in and then we'll wrap this up, brother. Awesome, man. Sounds good. But yeah, check me out on Instagram if you're not already, outlet.hunters. And if you're on YouTube, look me up on YouTube, Outlet Hunters. Hit that subscribe. We got some videos coming soon. So that's about it. Perfect. My man. Sounds perfect. All right, brother, you keep up the hustle and you, you bring home some, some good A's from college now. Yeah, those eyes popping Instagram photos. Yeah, for sure, man. I appreciate, appreciate y'all having me on. Y'all have a good one. Yeah, man. It's you too, awesome brother. time. All right, man. Peace. Peace.